the breadboard is a great solution to the problem of making and experimenting with circuit designs. Uh, you can connect and reconnect components without solder quickly. It's an easy way to run through variations. However, it's not terribly durable. You can uh, glue one down into the bottom of a cigar box and uh, hope that the parts don't jiggle too much as you move from place to place. But at some point, you may end up wanting to solder up a version of this that's a little more solid. And for that purpose, you have to buy yourself a PC board, printed circuit board, that mimics the form of the breadboard. And you'll see here that it seems to have a similar array of columns and uh, horizontal rows. Indeed, if we turn it over, you notice that it has copper strips that mimic the same metal strips that are used on the bottom side of the breadboard to link the holes in rows and columns. The next thing to do after you acquire the breadboard is to get a second copy of every component that you use on the breadboard because there is a very important rule about soldering together your first circuit, which is always leave the working circuit intact until you've finished the soldered one and know that it works. It's the easiest way to do debugging. So if there's a photoresistor on here, get a second photoresistor. If there's a capacitor on here, get a second capacitor. Don't be cheap. You need to get yourself also what is known as an IC socket for a chip of the same number of pins as the one you're using. 14 pin 74C14 means a 14 pin socket. You put it down on the circuit board on the non-copper side and you put the pins through and they come through on the other side. The socket is like a little tiny version of a breadboard. It only holds the chip. The reason you use this is that sometimes chips can be damaged by the excessive heat of soldering, and if they are damaged, they're very difficult to remove from the board with all their legs. So you need to attach this to the circuit board as your first step. So you need to turn the board over so that the pins stick through like this and make sure one is going through at every point. Then you heat up your soldering iron and you start to solder. Now, this requires a steady hand because these points on the board are very close together. And what you don't want to do is make short circuits or solder bridges between the pins. So you go along and you use as little solder as possible to make a good, clean, solid connection on each pin without it spilling over to the next one. Make sure the solder actually melts and flows and doesn't just drop off your iron and sit on the board like a little gray ball bearing. It should have the shape of a finely formed volcano. It should not look like a boulder-strewn field of terminal moraine for those of you who are geologists. So when the job is done, it should look more or less like this. All right, that was the most difficult part of the soldering. Now what you do is you bring your little circuit in side by side and you copy each aspect of its design. Here is a capacitor going from pin one to ground. So we're going to put our new capacitor in from pin one to ground. The other one was sticking way up in the air, but we don't need to do that here. We can press it down so that it's a little lower profile. And the legs bend over just a bit to help hold it into place. And then we solder one leg and the other. Make sure your orientation is correct on this and that the minus leg is going to ground. And then you take cutters and you cut off the excess wire. Okay. If you leave the excess wire sticking out of the bottom, it can bend over and short against something else. We have a photoresistor between pin 1 and pin 2, and you want to think about how high up you want it to be. If you stick it up in the air like this, you can mount this in a box and have this stick up through the top. On the other hand, if you're going to just use the circuit board in the raw, you may want to put it down lower. 
We'll make a little compromise. We'll make it as high as the capacitor. Once again, it's going between pins one and two like that. The legs are sticking down here. I solder each leg and leave your iron down for the minimum amount of time to get the solder flowing so that the excess heat does not melt or otherwise damage the components. So now we have the capacitor, we have the photoresistor, we don't have the power connections yet. Power connections from pin 7 to ground and pin 14 up to the plus. But what we do have are these little bits of wire that were cut off from the legs of the photoresistor. And we can use these to make our connections between the power supply pins, say the ground here, and the bus. And this saves us having to strip some wire. Just use a bit of the bare leg that we cut off of the photoresistor. So I turn this over, and I solder it. And there is our ground connection. Cut off the excess wire. Now find the other lead with which we will make the connection between pin 14 and plus. So we do the same thing. We just bend the wire into a sort of a croquet hoop shape, stick it down like this, and we've got it. Bend it a little bit to keep it from falling over. Turn the board over. Make the solder connection. Cut off the excess. There we are. The only thing that's missing here is we have no battery connection. So I get a second battery clip. And I make the black wire go to the ground bus down here. I turn over the board, and I solder this on. Then I make the plus wire go up here to the bus that's at the top. Turn it over. Solder this on. All right, all that's missing is connections for our audio. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make two bits of wire here. And I'm going to solder one to the ground and one to the output of the oscillator. And for the moment, we're just going to make a clip connection to our amp. But later on, when we decide how we're going to package our circuit, we can solder the other ends of these wires to whatever kind of jack we decide to use to make the connection to the rest of the world. A mini jack, it might be a quarter inch plug, whatever you feel like using as the wiring standard on your circuit. But for now, all we need is a little bare wire. So we've got our ground wire in. Now this is going into pin 2, which is the output of the oscillator. And now we compare our two circuits side by side. Capacitor, photoresistor, ground wire for the audio connection, output wire for the audio connection, ground of the battery, plus the battery. Looks pretty close. So we f get ourselves a second chip, and we press it down into the socket. You want to make sure it's oriented the right direction with the notch in the front. So battery is hooked up. The chip is not getting hot. Everything seems to be OK. Time has come to test it. Bring in your amplifier. 
connect the ground of the plug into your amp to the ground on your new circuit. And that's this long wire here. And now take the tip of the jack and connect it to the output of your circuit. Samash. 